When's the last time you were out for a drive and you glanced up at a traffic light and you felt your heart ping with a sense of gratitude? Probably never, right? Yeah, we're about to change that. You is a very fluid concept right now. It's culture and film and art. It's music and interesting books. It's conversations and eavesdroppings. It's the impact of friends and complete strangers. The stuff that gets into the cracks of your life and makes you who you are. It's an attention collection. You already have one. The question is, how are you using it? Hey friends, Anthony here. So the other day I was hosting a trivia game on Zoom because that's what my life has become. And I was talking to a group of middle and high school students and the trivia was around the life and time of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And when I came to a certain question, one of the adult leaders in the group spoke up and asked, did we learn this stuff in school? I doubt this was appropriate but my first response was just laughter. And then I probably made it worse because my next response was, yeah, it probably didn't make the cut in the two paragraphs they went over in February at your school. And I was only half joking. The day this episode drops, we will be in day two of what is known in the States as Black History Month. And this celebration was born in the mind and the heart of a man by the name of Dr. Carter G. Woodson, known to some people as the father of African American history. Here's a man who studied at the University of Chicago, where he received his master's, and then followed that up at Harvard, where he received his PhD. So he knew his American history, and he was moved by it, but not by the stories he read in the books. He was moved by the ones that never made the pages of our history books. And so in February of 1926, he set out to change that. He introduced what he called Negro History Week. But it wasn't until decades later in 1976 that Black History Month became a national focus. That's 50 years later. Think about that. And look, I'm thankful for the slight progress we've made since then. I'm thankful for the additions to curriculum, for the television specials that have been created, for the representation initiatives and some of the streaming platforms that we spend our time on. I'm thankful for the leaders and the artists of color who are making a splash throughout our culture. That goes without saying. But in many ways, Black History Month has been highlighted in schools through a few class periods dedicated to a few notable figures. We learn, of course, about Dr. King, and there are mentions of the freedom fighters like Harriet Tubman and Sojourner Truth, these amazing women. We learn about the Tuskegee Airmen and Ida B. Wells and Frederick Douglass and Rosa Parks and so on. And then, of course, we get to the notable black inventors. We, we talk about George Washington Carver, known for his work with peanuts, although he did so much more than just peanuts. Perhaps you learned about Charles Richard Drew, known as the father of the blood bank, you know, the pioneer that led to things like the Salvation Army, blood donations. And you probably didn't hear about Madam C.J. Walker in school, but Netflix recently spotlighted her contribution in a series called Self Made. She was this millionaire, successful creator of a line of black hair products. Brilliant. And then, of course... Mr. Garrett Morgan himself, the pioneer of an addition to the traffic signal. He received the patent for the caution signal, the yellow light that lets us know we better chill before we get a ticket or an insurance claim. And these are the highlights. But for every Rosa Parks, there's a Claudette Colvin. The truth is there's just no way one month can summarize black history. And I think we need to do a better job integrating black history into the full scope of American history. But as much as I do think we should explore the little known and the forgotten elements, I do want to go back and look at one of the highlights from a different angle. 
Let's go back and revisit Garrett Morgan and the traffic light. The truth is Morgan wasn't the only person working to improve traffic light systems, but his patent, the caution light, has undoubtedly saved thousands, if not millions of lives over the years. So what drove him to develop it? Well, story says that he saw a terrible accident take place at an intersection one day, and he wanted to do his part to prevent accidents like that from happening again. And the first thing I want to point out here is the obvious. We have become so accustomed to traffic lights, we barely even consider them. Sure, we'll look up every now and again to make sure we're okay. And yes, we will absolutely stare down a red light furiously when we're running late to get somewhere. But have you ever just glanced at a yellow light and smiled? Considering how grateful you are that someone went out of their way to develop something to keep you safe. Someone saw a deadly problem. Someone saw that a solution that was in place was only half a solution and worked to improve it. Have you ever just even thought for a moment about that? I'll admit I never have. I've never thought of it that way. And yet inventions like this are everywhere. Whether it's safety, convenience, it's time-saving, we benefit on a daily basis from the generous contributions of other people. And I believe it's important to remind ourselves of this from time to time. Look, sometimes gratitude is the result of deep meditation practice and journaling and reflection and silent retreats. All those things are fantastic. If you can do them, go for it. But there's a way to access gratitude just by looking around. Let's consider just a few of these inventions. The door lock. I mean, how key, how amazing. I said key. I didn't do that on purpose. How amazing is the door lock? The light, the ability to turn on light in a dark room, to extend working hours, to spend time with family in the evening, to be able to do things that we enjoy after dark. The refrigerator. I mean, let's spend three episodes on the refrigerator. Or how about this? The toilet. I guarantee You've never listened to a podcast that drew the connection between gratitude and a flushing toilet. That is until today. You're welcome. And of course, the three signal traffic light. I've gone my entire life without appreciating them. But, but watch this. Next time you speed under one, assuming you have the presence of mind, assuming you're not texting and driving, assuming you're not trying to find a better song in your playlist, I bet you're going to think about Garrett Morgan. And perhaps you'll even smile, as ridiculous as that sounds. Because that's what it's all about. These gifts, these little gifts are hidden in plain sight everywhere we go. These contributions, these generosities all around us from the brilliant minds of other people. If we're willing to lean in a little to just dig below the surface of ordinary things, we find out that nothing is ordinary. It's all extraordinary. It's all generosity. It's all worth being grateful for. For instance, not only did Morgan contribute to life-saving roadway technology, he also created a safety hood to prevent deadly smoke inhalation in firefighters. And then at one point, he even put on one of these hoods himself and ran into a tunnel after an explosion to rescue trapped firefighters. He was a hero. We don't think about that naturally, just looking at something as simple as a traffic light. But there's stories in everything. We are surrounded by stories. Stories we've forgotten, stories we've never been told, human stories that connect us all to each other. And these stories are swirling around us all the time, just waiting to inspire us, waiting to fill us up with gratitude. They're waiting around corners to blow our minds 
or to nudge us just a little bit forward. They're calling us to show up and make a change in the world. Because when someone has their mind blown by an invention, by a generosity, they want to turn around and do the same for others. They want to contribute as well. And all we have to do for this cycle to take hold of our lives is to get curious enough to slow down and listen. Yes, there is so much ugly in the world. There's so much we still need to do to create a fair and equitable experience for all of us, not just a few of us. But as we've seen, even in just this one story, a story among millions of other stories we could unpack, there's so much greatness to highlight as well. Let's lean into that this month as we celebrate black excellence and strength and innovation. Let's dig into these stories. Let's honor those who have gone before and let's lift up those who are currently leading the way. And if we do that, we might come to see that this experience can't be confined within the space of one month. It's something we can spend our entire lives unpacking. That means despite our circumstances, despite what situations we might find ourselves in, we will always be able to look around us and find something and therefore someone to be grateful for. All we have to do is slow down and pay attention.